Right then, we're leaving the little copse, little cool picnic area. And if you look over there, the air of outstanding beauty, it's lush, isn't it? I didn't get up here for the big outbreak of the heather, um, the bluebells when it was like a purple haze. I never, I never got over in time for that. But uh, I'm just going to stop here. There's lots of trees and shade. There is, it's quite good. It's only the worst bit is going to be when we're on the top and walking across the top later. Now, if I put, if I just zoom in there, I'm going to take a picture of the Barrington Coombe. Look. What you've got to remember is that I've done all this before, but not on this day. Not on the 19th of July 2024, I haven't. Now normally this time of year, could be that it's a Friday they normally do it, you've got the kids out, teenagers, doing their either Duke of Edinburgh or something or other, carrying big packs and they have routes they have to do. And they do it in this sort of weather. They go out in groups of say six, six to eight kids go off both sexes and they have people stationed around the Mendips here uh, obviously keeping an eye on them you know and all that and they can probably top up with water I, I would imagine yeah, you can top up with water when they reach each station um, and it trains them for well first aid it trains them for <coughs> map and compass carrying equipment Navigating their way around, building up their endurance. And I've always, I've always loved the countryside. And like I say, this, this is the last shade now until we get across over there. And I have missed the path before now, by the way. There's a parade that will come down from the top. We cross over the parade and close by there should be a path. No, not, don't, not to stray down there, which I have done before, and I've strayed up there, and it's a big hike when you start finding yourself going up and all that. We should really f see a path not far away now, head over there. But isn't it gorgeous and I lucky to be here? You know what I mean? Oh, it's so gorgeous, isn't it? It's so gorgeous. I got my hat on. We had a little drink a minute ago. There's a there is a breeze, which is welcoming. But we haven't got any fierce winds like we have had. Different ball game out here in the winter, mind. Different different type of endurance needed. Still endurance though. So there we go. We won't be coming back this way. So what we're seeing now, we won't see until we do this walk again. Which could be a year's time. This is great, by the way. And I have walked up in extreme heat up there. It's a big, I call it the parade. It's a big wide pathway. I mean, it could have been used in some sort of ceremonial thing in the past. Or it could have been used by the army. Because I learnt a few things about the hump, the humps and bumps on the top which I thought were ancient things. Some are, but some were placed there on purpose during the last world war to deceive the Germans into thinking it was a runway. And they had lights and that on it. Right, so we've crossed over from there. Let's just get our bearings. Right, we're at a junction point and we go straight over. We don't try and, that's why I didn't carry on that path. Otherwise you end up weaving your way and all that. Now that breeze is very welcoming. It's not fierce. It's not lively. It's cooling. And I've only, I've only just noticed it because we've been in the shade a lot. But it's very cooling. I put some suntan lotion on my nose and my forehead and my ears. Those are the sort of places that get burnt. And there of course is the Barrington Coombe, I, as people know, follow me, I've been up the other side of that, not for a few years now. 
I haven't got any great huge desire to go up there, but I've got a feeling there's some other walks I can do from over that side. <laughs> but uh, I'm fitting in some these walks while we can. I've done a lot of walking this week, and uh, I've really I really enjoy it. You know, only two days ago I was I was walking on the coast from East Quantock Head to West Quantock Head, walking by the beach, beautiful views of the ocean, the Atlantic, um, walking through wheat and cornfields, saying hi to the sheep, um, battling with ferns in, on the Quantock, Quantocks on the Coleridge Way, and avoiding bulls and lively cows on the way back to the East Quantock's Head. That's all got to be put on YouTube yet and saved to Weblink. I've got a lot to do. If I don't get it all done, it will get done eventually. Like I say, I do family tree, but you don't. I don't do a lot of it in the summer because I'm out walking doing living tree. I tell you what, that enough help in that breeze rather than it being still air and baking that would be very welcoming up the top as well right I'll turn off in a minute just to give the camera a little bit of a rest they don't like getting hot this one could turn off and I could lose everything I've done so I'm just going to turn off at this corner for a minute and I'll come back on again so I'm just turning off we're going down now to one of the first springs it's got a name, I can't remember all the names on the top of my head, but I will do it all later when I do the video. It's got names, I can't remember, it's first and second spring or something like that. It's water that comes down off. Sometimes it's it's running nicely, sometimes it's quite dry. But it could be in between today, I reckon. So I'll come back on when I get down there. Over and out from Sheila on the Mendip Hills. Right, no sign of trickling water. Yes, but it's, it is damp, it's not totally bone dry. And look how mucky it is here. So, and it'll rain tomorrow. So, but the stream is trickling, I'd say just tiny, but it is working. But some of it will be underground that you won't see, some will be underneath. And I can hear it trickling up there. If I just go up through there. Where it's shiny. There is water trickling there. See it glistening? So although it doesn't show it down the bottom here. It is actually seeping through. This little stream bed here. And it's quite damp, so the plants are doing quite well. It's not I've seen it where I've seen it bone dry here. But I've also seen it when it's in the winter with the storms, it gushes around the corner here. And you can hardly get across here. It's a different ball game, you see. So they, even though people say, Oh, you've been there before, yeah, but I've also been here when it's been full. So it's not the same time. Just taking some photos. I've been up there before. That's another track. If you go up there, it'd be very wild, <coughs> full of brambles and everything. But up there is um, a way to the top. I've done it. I explored it once. It's a steep climb, and this time of year, it's very, very overgrown, and you'd be baking doing those sort of tracks. So we're leaving this area now and we're going up with more views in a moment of Burrington Coombe. Now there are, it can be quite at the start of this walk, it, yeah it can be quite brambly, uh, you get attacked by the brambles. Um, 
<coughs> the bikers who come down here help to keep it clear in a way. They've got like a function from that point of view. And for a little while, just for not for long, we've got to climb up. We've got to come out of this little coom here. Coom Spring One. It's got a proper name, but I call it Spring One. We just got to go up a little bit. <coughs> then it levels right off for the rest of the walk. But the start of here, we just got to go up. Okay, so I'm going to turn off again until we get to the top. I'll join all these little ones together. Over now, this is Sheila on the 19th of July, 2024. Yeah, we've got Burrington Coombe, look. Nice views from here. Even though it's quite overgrown everywhere. There's Burrington Coombe. No one out, I can't see anyone up there. Formed similar to cheddar by river water and erosion. Some people think cheddar was caused by an earthquake, but well, it wasn't. There could have been earthquakes, but um, hold on, go back the way you come. There could have been earthquakes as well, but um, it's supposed to be formed by erosion because it's lots of limestone, you see, cheddar gorge. Do you know, there's parts of the country I would also like to explore, the Pennine Way, and some of the Yorkshire Moors, which I haven't got round to doing. There is somewhere I'd like to go, um, which was going to be on my list on the way up north, Wensleydale. It's best to go in the summer or before. I expect you could still do it in October, but I can't do everything at once because I'm very keen to do Newmarket, keen to stay at Lincoln for a good day at least, and then I mean, when I go away for too long, the problem is charging your, your equipment up and things like that and you've got a cart everything about them yeah I mean when I had Alberta I just used to leave all the camping stuff in there the whole summer I only took it out in the winter and when she started going damp because someone had pulled her rubbers out or seen her sealants right, the camera's getting warm and playing up a bit so I'm just going to do some brief videos with it it's only a little camera keeps turning itself off. It does that when it gets overheated. Burrington Coombe everyone. I've taken some lovely photos by the way with Kodak including this tree here. There is a walk in there where you can walk round but it's very overgrown as you can see. But I've done it all. I've walked all the way up, up on there before as well. I'm really enjoying this walk. I tell you, I love it. I love being warm. And I've, uh, I've said that uh, me and Zara might have to invest in proper thermal clothes this winter because we do live in cold flats. Very expensive heating. I mean, I mainly live in one room, the, the lounge. But the thing is, the bedroom is like walking into a freezer when I go to bed. I don't really think it's very good for me, really. I mean, I have two hot water bottles, three quilts, you know... But the air is freezing in the winter there. And that's without it really being what you call a massively cold winter either. It's Victorian, see? Victorian buildings. But of course it did used to have a fireplace. The Victorians probably weren't cold. They would have heated that room. So we live in the 21st century. Some people, like including me, I had flats where lovely big radiators... But they weren't turned on. Either the landlord turned them off or you couldn't afford to have them on. Yeah, so thermals are a good idea. Definitely going to invest in them this year. Right, we've come across quite a muddy patch because we have had quite a lot of rain, believe it or not. 
we're going down into another little spring two now. Or this one could be spring one. They've got proper names, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. And I haven't brought the map. And I'm not digging up the mobile to find it either. Um, I bought a mobile, I hardly use it. You know, I've got it because you've sort of got to have one. But, uh, yeah, I've got a watch. I use the watch now for time. Do you? Yeah, use the watch. I just went paid 11 quid last week for a battery. Should last a year, he said. As long as you don't use the light too much on it. So I thought, right, yeah. That's what I'll do. So I don't have to keep looking in the mobile. We're coming down to another stream. Don't know if I can hear the noise on that one at all. Yeah, like I said, we've had a lot of rain, actually. This is the first spell of summer we've had, and it's halfway through July. Last year we had a heat wave in the whole of June. This year, no. Grey, wet, and windy. And cold. Coldish. Yeah, this one's running. Spring one. It's coming down from the hill. Yeah, this one's uh, running a lot more. It's tricking in a lot quicker, this one. And by tomorrow, after rain, it will speed up even more. Here we go, look, see? That's quite a lot. There's a lot of water on the hills. Isn't there? A lot of water on the hills. Good for the animals and plants. Sound of music. Sound of the babbling brook. As said by Wordsworth. As I've said many times. So we just transverse over this little tiny stream. Which comes down in little stages. Look, you feel like you want to put your feet in it and you want to drink it. I'm sure people will splash their faces in it. I'm not quite sure how toxic the hills are, but it's very tempting, isn't it? Makes you thirsty looking at it. And then we go up this side. And we go down there. That'll take you down. I don't know what river that joins up with, whether it will join up to the Bamwell. I'm not quite sure where this one goes. There's Cheddar's over the other side. So it won't be going to Cheddar, will I reckon it'll be the Bamwell River, or even out to sea, of course. <sighs> Lovely little area. This is where I've seen the walkers, the young people with all their kit, all piled up round here. Some actually putting their feet in the water, having a rest. Sometimes those that keep an eye on them also have a little section here where they can check on them. But I think that might happen tomorrow. I'm out on, um, what day is it today? Oh, I don't know what day it is. Sorry, I don't know. Could be Friday today. Or is it Thursday? I don't know, actually. Um, and it's terrible when you can't remember what day it is. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, I haven't seen any, and that, they'd have, I'd have passed some by now. I seen some the other day when I was over Ebber Gorge, Duke of Edinburgh kids. Right, now another little climb, everyone, while we get out of this little coom. As we leave this one, we have to go up again. Just for a short while, so that's all you've got to imagine. It's not long, and then you're up on the flat again. With more trees and shade. So I'll turn off, I'll come back on again in a minute. 